Amen. God has a plan for every family. And God has a plan for your family. And God, God has no plan for leaving anyone out. Amen. God's, not, God's plan does not leave you out. You are included in his plan. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 15, is this all right? This sounds a little funny. Are we okay? Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not the funny one. It's, if it's the sound, if it, if it sounds funny. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ephesians 3, beginning in verse 14. He says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, for this reason, and it's very interesting, we're not reading the whole chapter, we're just capturing a portion of this chapter as Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Wow, he's talking about the family of God. He's talking about you. You are part of the family of God. There's a great distinction in this. And going into verses, verse 10, or what did I read? Verses, goodness, my, I have a lot of typos here. I'm not sure. Okay, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, listen to this, as we have, and you do have, you will have, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Do you see that God, God considers you to be a part of his family? God considers you to be a part of his family. We are the children of God. Now, most places in your modern translations, many places where it says children, it, it, it was original translation was you are the sons of God. And there's a distinction in Scripture sometimes when he says sons and leaves, leaves it as sons. There's as much a distinction there as there is when he calls us as the whole, as the bride of Christ. And, but the sons of God are those who receive the inheritance. I'm not a woman. I hope that's evident. But if I were it would be exciting to be called a son of God knowing that it's the sons who receive the inheritance. And, and that's who you are. Every one of you, we are born as sons of God. We receive the inheritance. But we are as children of God and men and women as children of God, we are part and we belong to the family of believers. There is so much here that... that that could be said, and I don't have time to say everything, but I do want to add this in. It says we're the family of believers, and I always like to read what it doesn't say. And here, what it's not saying, what it doesn't say, it does not call us to be a family of doubters. Amen. We're a family of believers. We're not a family of doubters. We believe God, and, and that's why we seek to do things God's way. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 and 10. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him. And the following two verses, verses 11 and 12 says, also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. He's talking about a family. Two are better than one, and three is better than two. And you see, part of the family, part of the purpose of a family is not to put each other down, not to criticize, not to tear down, but when one is struggling, it's to build each other up. And we need to be able to mentor one another. And let me give you a little advice in your family. If, if someone in your family is offering some correction, or let's say direction, encouragement, mentoring, 
let's, let's not take offense. Let's be aware that that's why as husband and wives we are partners, to build each other up and to help each other move in the right direction and to never tear each other down. I believe as husbands and wives that, that we should be encouraging each other as we are seeking and striving to do God's will in our life that each one builds and encourages the other to do so. God has designed life in a way that we cannot live and develop alone. We need each other. This design not only demonstrates our need for each other, it also illustrates our need for Him. If we need one another, when I was growing up, I needed my father. When my father left and went home to be with the Lord, there were times I still felt like I needed my father. We were the best of friends. But this illustrates our need for our Heavenly Father. And I have found that He is my best friend. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He is always there to help me and guide me. The greatest example of some of this is found in uh, Acts chapter 16 where Paul and Silas were in prison. And many of you know the story and I, I don't want to speak about them being in prison and and how though they were, they were chained down in, in the yoke and they couldn't move, but in the deep and dark part of the prison, and, or the dungeon is what it was, and, and traveling into Europe, I've seen a couple of those dungeons and, and uh, some of the things that, uh, that they would do to torture the people, and it's pretty, pretty wild, pretty crazy. Uh, but they were in that dungeon, strapped down, they couldn't move, they couldn't get out, and they began to sing and worship because two were better than one. If there had only been one, it may have been hard to worship. And whenever Paul began to sing, and one thing he didn't have was Silas telling him, shut up, you're embarrassing me, you can't even carry a tune. No, Silas began to sing, and maybe with a little fear and and trepidation and their voices quaking but they begin to sing and they got bolder and one encouraged the other and the power of God came down and the, the whole jail, the prison broke apart like as an earthquake apparently hit and, and the jailer was in trouble. The jailer knew that, that he, would, he would lose his life because all the prisoners now were able to escape. But Paul encouraged him and told him that would not happen. In verses 31 and 32 of Acts 16, they replied to him, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. I love this part. See, amen. We need a vision for our household no matter what we're going through and and when we're going through the hardest of times, we need a vision for our household. And he said, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, to the jailer, and to all the others in his house. And then following in verse 33 and 34, it said, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds, and then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The whole family turned to the Lord in this instance. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Let me tell you, there's nothing that will fill you with more joy as a believer than knowing that your family turns to the Lord. Amen. And it's and finds the, the grace of God in their lives. So catch the vision. Catch the vision. And we need to catch the vision. It's a basic vision. It's a simple vision. We need to catch the vision of what God wants to do in our lives and for our families. It's through relationships. Relationships aren't discovered. They are built. Relationships are built purposefully. Everyone has a role to play and a place to serve. So let me encourage you in your relationships, in your family, find that place to serve, find that role to play, and do what God asks of you. In fact, I would say it this way, do what God is requiring of you. 
requiring of you to be encouragers one to another. Remember this simple little phrase. You may escape responsibility, but you will never escape consequences. You may escape your, your responsibilities and not live up to your responsibilities. And that's not God's plan. You may escape your responsibilities and take it easy on your part and let the other one carry the load, but you'll never escape the consequences. You see, God has a place for us to serve. And that's not serving ourselves, it's serving one another. Serving ourselves is not serving. Serving one another is serving. And, and we need to focus on this. We need to understand this and comprehend this. Each one needs more encouragement than what we realize they need. And if we think, well, he or she is doing so good, they don't need encouragement from me. Can you imagine how well they would do if they had someone in their corner fighting for them, fighting with them, encouraging them? Amen. I can only imagine how well, how great each one of you would do if you had someone right there by your side because two are better than one. And a, a threefold strand is not easily broken. We need a vision for God's purpose in our family. So what is God's vision for my family? Isaiah 54 and 13, it says this way, all your sons, that includes men and women, but these those who receive the inheritance. And I'm talking about eternal things as well as earthly things. All your sons will be taught by the Lord and great will be your children's peace. You see, God's concerned about the family. And great will be your children's peace. Around here in our children's ministry and such, I, I have a policy. Be safe, feel safe. We want to be safe and make sure everyone is safe, but also we want to make them feel safe. And we want the parents to feel safe when they leave their children with us. Be safe, feel safe. Well, that's the way God wants it in a family is where we help each other be safe and help each other feel safe. Provide and protect. This is the plan that God has for us. In fact, the Bible says that a man that will not provide for his own household is worse than an infidel. You see, God, men, God expects you to work. God expects you to earn something so that you can provide for those around you. And it's always been my assumption, and I may be very, very, very wrong, but it's always been my assumption that a man who won't provide for his family will fail to protect his family. That may not be true, but it's always been my assumption. If you won't provide, if you won't work and serve, you know, I, I remember the times in being in construction and uh, digging those ditches to, to lay plumbing in, digging the ditches to pour our concrete in, to tie the rebar and pour the concrete. And I remember so many times in those younger years working and it would be so hot or sometimes very, very cold and we're out there working and, and I would think I'm getting tired of this. But every time, I would be reminded, and, and I think it came from things that my dad had mentored into me is, I'm not doing this for me, I'm doing this for my family, and I'm doing this for the glory of God. And so would you stay after it, and I'm providing for my family, and, and I'm not an infidel, I'm not an unbeliever, and whatever it takes, that is what I will do. And I've dug, I'll just explain it this way. I've dug enough ditches that I've worn shovels and grubbing hoes out. I've worn, I've, I've had them where they were worn out and began to curl over and had to, had to go buy a new shovel. Amen. I didn't wear my handles out. I wore my shovel out. Well, now today in my life, I just, I just run pins out of ink and I have to go get a new pen, you know. Quite, quite a contrast. Zach reminded me of these scriptures, and I'm using them. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because Zach has a plan to use them later in ministry. And so I don't want to convey the concept or the idea that Zach is mimicking me. He just shared this with me the other day, and, and I, I grabbed on to it also. In Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says, But as for you, 
speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Notice, listen, that the older men be sober, be sober-minded, think clear. Translation, uh, the hillbilly translation is, don't be stupid, you know. <laughs> that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, controlling yourself, sound in faith, in love, in patience, and the older women also, or likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And then it goes on into verses 4 and 5, that they admonish the young, the young women. You see, that means the, the older women are to teach the younger women. And that translates, without being said, that the younger women should or must, should listen to the older women and receive mentoring. We can't develop ourselves alone. We need one another. And so that the, they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And then the next two verses or three, six through eight, verses six through eight. Likewise, the young men to be sober-minded. You see, it's, it's not just the old men that are required not to be stupid. It's the young men that are required. Somewhere, young men, we have to... We, I'm thinking back years ago. Somehow, young men realize that God has called you to think clear, have a clear mindset, not do things rash and, and out of line and do things that you will regret. That's what he's talking about. And not do things that, that your family will regret and pay the price because of something that you did. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed having nothing evil to say of you. Wow. Wow. Amen. There's a lot of mentoring that needs to be going on. For a great, long-lasting, strong relationship, the building blocks should be put in place early. Amen. The building blocks for your life and for your family should be put in place early. Like, if not before, now. Starting now, today. Psalms 84 and verse 5 says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. That's a very interesting scripture. You know, we're, we're in a, you could say a pilgrimage. On our way from from earth to heaven, on our way from infants to maturity, to saints, to being living with God. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in God. You're blessed if your strength is in Him. You've set your heart on pilgrimage. I looked that word up in the original Hebrew, and, and it means, it said, that the definition is viaduct which is a bridge or an overpass. It's once you get on it, you keep going till you get off of it, or a staircase. And our heart is set on pilgrimage. Once we start going, we don't turn back. Can you imagine being on that one-way bridge going over, and you decide to turn back, and you head back, how much destruction you're going to do with others on your way back? And this is the concept he's giving. And, and if we do damage to anybody, uh, it, it will be into affecting our own families. You see, your family is very, very important to God. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith. And I like this translation. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith. Now, I know this is Mother's Day, but, but I guess we're including the men in this somewhere. I hate to leave the men out because if the men see corruption, the whole family may be led to corruption. Be watchful, 
stand firm in the faith, and it says, act like men. Men, act like men. Okay, we could go through a list, don't act like uh, effeminate, don't act like a pervert, don't act like a woman. Act like men, be men, and then it says, be strong, and let all that you do be done in love. Wow. Amen. Be strong, but be loving. Be strong, act like a man, and be kind, be strong enough that you're not intimidated by things around you that you can still love. You know, I like hanging around some of the guys in this place. They make me want to be nice. Some of you guys are so nice and so kind, it makes me want to be nice and be kind. And, and you act like men, and it's manly because you're strong. You're strong in your faith, and you're strong in your love. You're strong in your discipline. I love it. I appreciate it. Proverbs 11 and 21 says, Be assured an evil person will not go unpunished. But, I like this, the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. Amen. Amen. That's your children. That's your children. And that's God's promise to you. That's why we, we need to get back to the basic vision and see what God has to say about the family. That, that when we do things right, our children will be at peace. When we do things right, our children will be delivered. Our children will be blessed. Psalms 112 verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. It says, blessed is the man who fears the Lord who finds great delight in his commands. That means the man who loves God's, God's plan better than their own plan. He is, notice, notice, when you love God's plan better than your own plan, it gives this assurance, this promise. His children will be mighty in the land. It means they'll be influencers. They'll be mighty in the land. People will look to them and follow them. His children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Do you want your children to be blessed? Amen. I thank God that my children are blessed in many ways, blessed in so many ways, and have been delivered at so many times as I have through challenges and hard times and times when when we could have seen everything fall apart, but God blessed. Instead of just holding it together, God made it great. The blessing of the Lord. That's what I want from my children. Let's get back to the basics. The basic vision. The vision, this that we're talking about, the vision of family and home. God's plan, God's vision. You know, you may not have much hope for your family, and, and you may even... Have be one that has a negative mindset and always sees the, uh, uh, the negative more than the positive. Did you know if you get your connections right, if you get everything connected right, you'll be, have more of the positive than the negative. Man, you get connected, everything connected above, everything connected with the word, and you'll see the positive more than the negative. But let's not be those who who see the negative, let's get back to the basic God's vision for your family. Not what you see, not what you hear, not what you feel, but God's vision for your family. And these are the things that God is telling us. And when we get God's vision for the family, then our faith begins to lead, lead that way and direct us that way, encourage us and strengthen us that way. Continuing with God's promises, I love this, Isaiah 49 and verse 25. God gives you this promise. I will contend with those who contend with you. Did you know the devil is after you and he's after your family? And he says, I will contend with those who contend with you and I will save your children. There's no battle facing you that you must fall if 
There's contention against you. God will contend with those who contend with you, and he will save your children. And your children are worth it. They're worth it to God, and they're worth it to you. Man, stand in the fight. Stay in the game. Don't give up. Don't back down. And let God bring blessings into your house. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And let me continue. Isaiah 44 and 3, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. He's making a prophetic reference to that which is spiritual. The thirsty land, the streams on dry ground. Hey Amen. Let's go ahead and turn the music up just a little bit, I think. I don't know if it's out there or not. I, I'm not hearing it. But I just want to give you a moment here to let the Lord, we could say, melt your heart, but let the Lord meld your heart. That's kind of like melt, a word, a cross between melting and welding. Meld your heart. Let the Lord meld your heart to Him right now. God's promises are so good. They are so profound. To receive his promises brings such a, such a blessing. God is so faithful. And the water here is representative of the Holy Spirit and his presence. I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon your offspring. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. The blessings of God, the promise of God. So catch the vision of what God has for your family. Someone might say, well, preacher, somehow it almost seems like it's, it's too late. I just, it's too far along and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to change. Well, let me tell you, I believe that you can change the world but I believe it starts by changing your own. Let me read this. There are not many things that you can change. But there is one thing you can change that most people do not. You can change your world. You can change your world. Believe it or not, you can. The best place to start is where you are right now. The best time to start is right now. The best thing to start is changing yourself. You really can change your world if you start with yourself right here and right now. It won't be long till you will be making a difference in the world right where you live. So, get on your mark, get set, go. Amen. Get on your mark, get on your mark, get set, and go. And change the world. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 7. It says, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart be upon your heart in your heart impress them on your children impress them on your children fathers and mothers impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up talk about them if you ever mentor anybody, make sure you mentor those of your own family. If you ever make a difference in anybody's life, make sure you're making a difference in the lives of your own family. I have a, one more thing I want to say, then I want to ask Christina to sing, and you can worship with her. I wrote down years ago in one of my messages, and I borrowed it for today I wrote three attributes 
of a godly mother. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love, of course, but three attributes of a godly mother, faith, hope, and love. And these come from God. Now I want to explain this with one more statement. A water tap, do you know what a water tap is? That's the faucet in your sink, your lavatory. It's the faucet outside attached to the hose. A water tap does not possess water. It only releases water. And the attributes of God that is within you are not the things you possess, but they are the things you can release. Amen. Faith, hope, and love. Always pray your biggest prayer over your family. And always declare your greatest blessings over your family. Just like he said that we should do so over the, the family of God. And speak it over the family of God. God loves you so much. He's so proud of you. I believe this is something he wants me to tell you right now. He is so proud of you. He's so thankful for you. And I know if we look at all the downside in our past, we may not feel so proud of ourselves, but I believe God is proud of you. And all he wants you to do is look to him and trust him and expect great things from him. Christina, would you go ahead and lead in worship? down can't we and our souls can get weary While she's singing, let me invite you to stand and let's worship the Lord. I don't know how you felt when you came, but I'm sure you felt good when you got here. He just wants to raise you up into his presence. Thank you, sir. Raises us 
us up to more than we can be, to more than we are. It's only in Him. So don't give up. I want to pray for the, the families, for your family. In Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 35, he says, So do not throw away your confidence, because it will be richly rewarded. Put your confidence in Him. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. And I want to encourage you to do it God's way. Do your life God's way. Do your family God's way. Do your marriage God's way. Father, I bless this house today. I bless every home. I bless every marriage, every family. Let your spirit minister. Lord, let us receive of you the ministry of your spirit this day to be what you want us to be, to be all that you plan for us to be, to be more than what we ourselves could be. I bless every family. I bless every home. Let your spirit minister. Let your spirit mentor. Father, let your spirit speak and let us hear. Let us receive. Have your way, sir. Have your way, Father. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Continue praying. I feel led to say one more thing. The Bible tells us that children should obey their, their parents. And then in another place, it, it tells us that we should always honor and love our parents. Always honor them and love them. When we're children, we obey. There comes a time our children no longer obey us because they're grown and God is leading their lives and they endeavor to do what God wants and they are out from under our command and control but not out from under our influence and, and he says that we should love and honor our parents. Well, this is what God wants. He wants you to be as children that obey his command and then he wants you to be as adults that love him and adore him and appreciate him for who he is. Father, we love you and we give you all praise. Thank you, sir. Then I want to pray, if, you, if there's any here, and you say, I don't know Jesus. I've never surrendered to him. There's some things I've endeavored to do my way, and, and I've never surrendered everything to him. I want to encourage you to put your hope and trust in God and maintain hope in the things that are eternal. Life goes on beyond the time that we spend in this flesh. Isaiah 43 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing, he says, in your life. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And I believe it's springing up today. He wants you to know that he can and he will and he is doing a new thing in your life. He said, I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I know there's some things in your life that, that you're tired of by now and things that just hasn't worked the way you thought it was, would. But he said, I'm, I'm bringing streams into the wasteland. If you would like to accept Christ as your Savior, you can do so right here, right now, today, right where you are. The way you accept him as your Savior is by making Jesus your Lord. And I would like to pray with you. And here in just a little while, we'll continue worshiping even after the dismissal. And if you desire prayer for anything, for any reason, there will, be, there will be people that know how to pray the prayer of faith with you in the front. And, and for any reason, concerning anything in regard to your life, God will hear your prayer as you call upon him. Let's pray this prayer, accepting Christ as Savior and I'd like to invite you to pray with me the words I pray or pray in your own words, but let's pray something to this effect. Heavenly Father, I believe you. You're my God. You're the creator of heaven and earth. You're the God of eternity. You are the lover of my soul. I believe you. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, your only begotten son, whom you sent to this earth through a virgin named Mary. He came as a baby and became a man and then gave himself. He gave his life as a sacrifice for, 
for my salvation, for my soul. The shedding of, of his blood was for the cleansing of my sin, every sin. I accept Jesus as my Savior and I make Jesus my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord. And Father, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I surrender to you. Forgive me of my sin. Every one of them, deliver me from my sins. Deliver me from my shame. Take it all away and heal me from my pain. That which was imposed by others and that which was imposed by myself. Cleanse me and make me whole. You are my God. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. And I will serve you all the days of my life now. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we're going to give you a moment as we worship and as Christina begins to sing again. Give you a moment just to worship God. If you prayed that prayer, if you agree with that prayer, you've prayed it before, let's just give God a moment and let Him minister to our lives. God, as he raised you up to be more than you could be. Amen. I'm so thankful. God is so good. We love you. We give all praise and glory. Would you just give praise and glory to God for the moment? Praise God. God is so good. He's so worthy of our praise. Thank you.